Hey, what's up, everybody out there in YouTube land? Elric Ferris here once again on the Motherboards.org YouTube channel. Welcome back. Well, Gigabyte has released a new series of motherboards called the G1 Killer Series. Now, these motherboards are not for the Mika wallet. These are very high-end motherboards built for the serious gamer who wants to show off his system and have the absolute best motherboard that he can get his hands on. Today we're going to be taking a look at the midline board of the G1 series. There are actually three boards. There's the Assassin, the Sniper, and the Gorilla. Right now we're going to do the unboxing and do the review of the Sniper, which is their midline board. So let's start out. We'll talk about the board a little bit. It's based off the X58 chipset. It'll support all of the new i7 CPUs, including the new 990X. Features triple channel DDR memory. Use it for 24 gigabytes. Actually, the new T1 Black series from our friends over at Kingston is actually geared for this board. All the XMP profiles work well. So we're going to start off. We have two more boxes that are inside of the box. One holds the motherboard. One holds the accessories. Going to go ahead and pull that out. You can see like right here, there's a nice clear packaging where you can see the motherboard all through here. This is how actually gamers are going to want it to be as well. Gamers who want to show off their motherboard, especially people who like the NVIDIA colored stuff, this is what they're going to want to be showing off. They're going to want to see this through their case. So let's take a look at the accessories package though first. Accessories package is really cool. Right off the bat, it comes with a giant G1 killer poster. I'm probably going to have to back up a little bit because this is probably too big for the camera to get in from where I'm at. So I'll pull back a little bit and see if you guys can see this. This is one side of the poster. And on the other side, you get a target. Now, kids, don't play with guns. Guns are dangerous and don't play with guns. They're dangerous. But here's a target. So if you've got a little laser pistol or a dart gun, cool beans. Nice poster. Okay, so now we're going to move on. We're going to take a look at the stickers. You get a couple different kinds here, front and back. If you've got kids, kids always like stickers. Sometimes they can be annoying, though. They get stuck on something you don't want, but they come inside of here anyway. It's pretty nice. Then we've got the G1 Killer Manual. has all the stuff. Tells you how to hook up your motherboard and everything like that. CD in here. All the drivers and everything are located on the CD. So once you get your motherboard installed or anything, you just pop this thing in and start installing the drivers. We've got a multilingual installation guide. So this comes in multi-languages, including, I believe, Klingon. All right, we're moving on. We've got the rear I.O. It's where it keeps all the stuff out of the back of your computer, such as dust and everything. You can install it. Not bad. Get a little case sticker for the front of your thing, the Gigabyte. We've got a breakout bracket right here. This is for your USB 3.0 front breakout bracket. Pretty cool little thing. Plugs actually into the motherboard itself. So it doesn't have a little connector that goes around the back of the case like some people offer. This plugs into the motherboard. Next up, I have both the single and triple SLI cables. Most of your video cards for the Crossfire series will come with their cables in the box. Now we've got a couple SATA cables as well. Got two of these in the box. I'm not going to go ahead and bag these. You guys know what these are. Then we've also got a couple screws, a little stuff in here. And that about concludes everything that actually comes inside the box as far as accessories go. Take a look at the motherboard itself. We can see that it's very nicely laid out. It's based on the standard ATX form factor, so it'll fit in any mid-tower or larger case. That's pretty cool because the actually the Assassin motherboard, the high-level one's extended ATX motherboard, only fits in just a few cases on the market. Around the CPU area, we can see it's very nicely laid out. It's got low profile capacitors and everything. These are all good Japanese made parts. They won't pop or break on you and they're actually guaranteed for quite a long time. The motherboard has basically the magazine right here and there's a bullet actually right in the side here. I'll spin it just real quickly so you guys can see that. That's supposed to be the magazine for the gun. There's also in this as well, these are also cooling components because you see underneath here running all along, there's actually a heat pipe that's running all along. So not only are these components on the motherboard for visual aspect, they actually help in cooling as well. I'm going to spin it back around. This is basically right here is the barrel of the gun. So if you had a gun, here's the thing you hold on to. Here's the barrel. Here's your magazine. All in all, the killer series, this is supposed to be a gun, hence towards the series of the motherboards. Over here, we have three PCI slots. These are each 16X. They're pretty well spaced apart. Like we talked about before, it features triple SLI and triple crossfire. You have two of your single PCI-1 slots and then an old school PCI slot right here. 
One of the great features that's offered on this board, the Sniper and both the Assassin, is the embedded Creative 20K2 Sound Blaster Audio, which features the latest high-end bipolarized Nichicon capacitors. These are the highest-end capacitors you can get on the market. You can see them right here. These will do not only gaming, but also professional audio. One of the biggest features that comes on all of the new G1 Killer Series motherboards is the embedded E21 Killer network card. Now, this is based off Bigfoot Technologies Giant Killer card. Now, this card is made for the gamer and it really offers a lot of features that most people may not even use. It offers features such as CPU offload. What this means is that you can set up the E2100, it has its own processing unit in it. You can set it up to take all of the functionality and everything that you're using and processing power off of your CPU and onto the network card itself. You can also prioritize how things are doing. Like say that you are like playing a game and right now you're on the internet, you've, you're downloading something. So currently you've got your network card plugged in and not only are you downloading something, you're playing a game online. You can actually prioritize the way that this network card works so that you can set like say the priority of the download to four, but you're gaming to one. Now, they claim that this will add a lot of functionality and make you play your games and do all your stuff much more efficiently. Only, I believe, a pro end gamer will be able to notice these things, but it is a great feature that is offered. Also, if you took the Creative Sound Blaster chipset and the E2100 chipset itself and you tried to buy them separately as cards, you'd be spending actually about $230 just to get those things off the board. And they actually come embedded right on the motherboard. Both the Creative, which we talked about, and the E2100 are two of the biggest features that are offered on all of the series of motherboards. The Creative is not offered on their Gorilla board. That actually has a Realtek chipset, but all the other motherboards feature both the E2100 and the Creative 20K2 chipset. When you're ready to install this motherboard and put it into your case, it's going to be very easy to do. You can see that all the connections are very easily connected right here. They're very well marked. Also, this little bracket right here, this is where that USB 3.0 breakout box plugs in. We're going to flip it around, spin around, take a look at the SATA ports. This one right here, the white connector, this actually supports the new SATA 6 gigabit connections. So you can use all the latest and greatest hard drives that are out there. Most of the other X58 motherboards don't offer this, and this motherboard can support all those and even bigger drives through their new BIOS. We have actually one 24-pin power connector here, and then back here again, we have another 8-pin power connector, giving the additional power to the CPU. Taking a look in the rear I.O., we can see that it features not only all new technology, but it features the old legacy PS2 and keyboard ports as well. So those people who don't have old USB stuff will be able to plug this in and get going. We have the coaxial audio right here. This can be plugged in and used with all of the older, like 7.1 and 5.1 surround systems that were out all throughout the 90s and the early 2000s. Here we take a look at the one touch overclocking button, which is good for overclocking. So all you have to do is push a button, you get instant overclocking. Coming down over here, we've got two of your eSATA ports. Then we've got two of the USB 2.0s, then another set of USB 3.0s, another set of USB 2.0s, your LAN port, your SPDFF port, and then all of your standard old school analog stuff for plugging in all your type of, uh, you know, your sound systems that use the standard old plugins. Those of you who are using digital, you're going to use the SPDIF or the coaxial. So that pretty much wraps up about the features and how the board is laid out. So now let's move on and let's see how fast this board is. Let's compare it to some of the other boards in these same categories of X58. And at the end of the day, let's see whether it's worth your money as the end user. <laughs> This motherboard is really not for those who are meek of the wallet. The motherboard sells for about $449 on Newegg and other online e-tailers, so that's a pretty hefty price. 
But if you're a gamer who really wants the absolute best features and you want a motherboard that you can actually show off and look at, especially for guys who do modifications, motherboard that has a gun on it, you can do all kinds of mods inside of camouflage cases. With the design of this being NVIDIA, you could have it inside of an NVIDIA-based system. So this gives a lot of opportunities for those people who are overclockers, enthusiasts, and modders to have a motherboard that gives them very much opportunity to do. You know what I mean? If you're a guy out there, you might be looking at this going, damn, that's exactly what I'm looking for. You know as a modder what I'm talking about. Has great features. The onboard NIC card and the Creative Sound Blaster are features that you're really not going to see on any other motherboard currently out on the market. Some people might say, oh, that's not that great of a feature, but they really are in good features because they're embedded. When the technology gets actually embedded onto the motherboard and functions as well, that's kind of like a little bit of a technology leap and bound. I mean, it's not like you just invented the wheel, but it still is good stuff. Me personally, I'm much more impressed with the Sound Blaster 20K2 than I am with the Nick car. Just because for me, I'm way more into sound. You guys know me, I'm a musician. I like sound that's good quality. The quality of the sound on this motherboard is incredible. It does sound a thousand times better than the Realtek. You plug in a pair of headphones into your Realtek one, take it out and plug into this, you see one hell of a big difference in how the board sounds, and that's going to be important. So at the end of the day, if you're somebody who wants the absolute best, you're a modder, you want something that's not only going to be visually pleasing, that functions, the new sniper board, to me, is the sweet spot of the G1 Killer Series. Fits in a standard ATX size, which means it'll fit in lots of motherboards. Even at $440, it's competing at the high-end motherboards. It's still probably worth it if that's what you're looking for. So I give this motherboard a thumbs up and an editor's choice here on motherboards.org for both innovation and just having one damn cool product.